and the potassium of space curves. So we are given some curvature function positive and some, we don't know if that is curvature or torsion, but any, anyway, if you are given some functions, positive function or the function, your value the function given, then what? Then there exists a curve, space curve, space curve where curvature the given function, additive function and torsion is tau, up to position up to position so if you allow translation or reflection something then we have a curve in R3, satisfying that cur each curvature is a kappa and torsion tau, right? So uh, we work that example. So we look for a curve such that the ratio of torsion and curvature is a constant. So we are looking for a curve such that the ratio of torsion and curvature is a constant. Actually, you know what that is already, <coughs> right? We had a proof, right? We have a proposition of that. So what is that? What kind of curve has that property? Helix, right? We know that. No. By proposition we did, so the alpha is V helix. So let's we let's see how. So actually we worked that out, and so here is the summary of the things because we I'm going to show other things out of this. So you change the variable, so we introduce a new variable, new parameter t. So t of s is integral zero to s. We assume k positive, so that function sigma d sigma. So we introduce a new parameter t, okay? So t is a function of s. And this dt ds is a curvature s, right? By fundamental theorem of calculus, right? So that, that according to this new parameter t, we change it, change it, everything accordingly. So t prime, we change it, t prime, originally is t prime s, right? But now we change it t prime, n prime, b prime, using the t variable, that one, okay? So if you do it then, we have uh, following. Second derivative of n, we have t and b, okay, is plus, that is uh, w square n equals zero. Here w square is one plus c squared. The c, the c is the, the same c. So I don't want, want to repeat that everything, okay. So, so there is some work here. So we did that last time, okay? So this is the equation in terms of big N. So we know how to solve that. From DE, we know that N is a, what? Cosine WT A plus sine W T B for constant vectors A and B. At that time, at that time then we have a real value the function, but here it's same, same applies. Okay, so we can 
find uh, we can solve this second order linear differential equation actually a constant coefficient okay so then this one actually is integral of <coughs> t dt so derivative of t big t is n okay so by taking the oh sorry the, 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 the. dt dt this is a dt dt okay so let's take the integral in terms of t then we have 1 over w sine wt a minus cosine wt b plus some vector c so we have another c is a constant vector Right? Mm -hmm. And then we take this is derivative of the alpha, right? So let's take the integral respect to on the variable s. We know t is a function of s. We are not taking the integral respect to t. So this is a 1 over w constant, integral 0 to s sine wt sigma d sigma a minus 0 to s cosine wt sigma d sigma b plus c s plus another vector d. Let's put the outside, outside of it then, okay? Right? Okay, then there is some messy work. Okay, there is some messy work. We figure out that A, B are orthogonal, and A and B and C are orthogonal. Okay, and length of the A is same as the length of B, and it's a union. C is orthogonal to A as well. Okay, so one of the whole more problem then I ask you to verify that this is C, vector C in there, that is a three A, uh, A cross B, and length of that C is a, that constant to C. Okay, so we have a, what? Using that fact, actually A, B orthogonal and C is A cross B and length is C. So now we can change this one. We can change it. This one, alpha S is 1 over W. Then, so vector integral 0 to S sine omega T sigma D sigma is A direction, we can interpret that as a kind of one zero zero, B is a zero one zero, and C is like a zero zero one. So we can make that one as a zero two S minus cosine W T sigma D sigma. And last one is a plus some constant data D. So there are some work between that, okay? So that means uh, this shows that here we have a, we have a, this alpha is a y. There are some x, y, but we have a cs and this is k component. So it grows along, this is c, that, 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 that direction, 
the k direction, right? So it's, it actually shows that this is a helix, right? Okay, then that's what we found yeah, last time. Then there are some some nodes. Yeah. Okay, what happens? Uh, the torsion is a zero. We know that the torsion is zero. Then curve is. Uh, torsion is zero. Then curve is. Uh, plane curve, right? So let's see what happens. If a torsion is a zero, then torsion is a C times a curvature. So torsion is zero means a C is a zero, right? So that implies a constant C we use there is a zero. So what's happening if C is zero in this formula we obtained? C is zero, you see? We only have a X, Y, right? So that shows this is a plane curve. Okay, that's one thing we can see also. Then, uh, what about uh, curvature is constant and torsion is zero? Huh? Curvature is constant, positive constant, and torsion is zero. So what is the curve? So torsion is zero, so that has to be a plane curve, right? And curvature is constant. That has to be, uh, uh, if it is a zero, then it's straight line. But what about non-zero constant? <laughs> non-zero constant. Yeah, if the curvature is zero, is a straight line. What about non-zero? It's a circle, right. We know that it's a circle, right? Let's figure out from here. So if uh, that's the case, that's the case. Uh, then torsion is zero, we know that C is zero from that. So that means uh, omega uh, W we have there is uh, one. one. Then we assume curvature is constant as well. So this T is uh, what? This is a constant. So it's a KS. So the parameter we use there T is a KS. Okay, k something, k times a variable, right? If you, if you have a variable s, then t of s is a ks. So let's plug those in there to see. So w is 1, so 0 to s, sine w, t sigma, ts is ks. So that is, uh, that is w is 1, so it's k. K S uh, uh, I like I like to use the sigma, okay? <laughs> sigma, okay, same as that above. So K sigma D sigma minus integral zero to S cosine K sigma D sigma and C is zero. So we have that plus D. That is the one after we plug, uh, substitute every conditions we set. So this one is uh, 1 over, what is the integral of that? K, okay, minus uh, cosine K sigma 0 to S. This is minus uh, 1 over K sine K sigma zero to S and zero plus D. So let's see. Let's take out one over K. 
Then this is a cosine KS minus 1. Mm -hmm. And minus, I take that one. So it's a sine KS minus 0. Sine KS minus 0 plus D. Right? After that the integral. So what is that? X is given this, and Y is that. That is a, a circle, right? It's a circle. It's X plus 1. Here, if you set this is X, X plus 1 is a cosine KS and y is a sine ks so this square plus y square equal to 1 so it's a circle so this is a circle okay so from this example we can see something like that okay all right then So please remember that process. I erase that, but yeah. Based upon this work example, uh, there are three problems uh, I have work, I've been working with several students over the last three or four, four years. Uh. So first one, Research, okay. okay. First one, the Yarim and me. Okay. So here is the word. I had a question here. What about uh, the ratio of the torsion and curvature is uh, simply S. We know the case that we have a constant. That's what we had, right? What about the ratio of this one is just S, Arclanx S. To work that one, actually, we need extra condition. So we assume K is a constant. So curvature is, a, curvature is constant. Kappa or K, yeah, curvature. Then we use a chain, use it, uh, same parameter S that I said is a curvature sigma, D sigma. So we change it, the, all the parameters, the variables in terms of T. And because of this extra different thing, we have some different T prime, M prime, B prime. Okay? So then, using this T, we could ob obtain third order differential equation. It was the second order, right? Simple second order equation with the constant coefficient from the example that I erased. But if you assume this one, there are third order. Third order linear differential equation with variable coefficient. So everyone take to the E, right? Differential equation. No? You said not yet? Oh <laughs> I see. Oh then, uh, this one does not have a constant coefficient, so we cannot use the characteristic equation. But there is another way. This is a high order differential equation. So what is the way we handle? 
<laughs> then we use a series solution. You remember calculus two? We studied the series a, a while, right? So we look for the series solution. So zero is the regular point of that differential equation. So we use uh, the a n t to the n. We look for the solution in the neighborhood of zero. So we plug this one into n. Take the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative. We plug this one into n. Do you remember that? That process is quite messy, right? So plug that in there, so and determine a n. Okay, that a n is there actually is a constant vector. So we determine a n. So once you get n, like this example, then we can recover t and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the approach. Okay. And Devin and I what about this ratio is uh, 1 over s that yeah reasonable right mm -hmm. 1 over s and we assume kappa is a constant as well Then this time, we change the parameter t differently. This one, 0 to s, we put torsion instead. Instead of kappa, we use a torsion. Actually, torsion is, if you replace torsion, that is a 0 to s, well, curvature over sigma d sigma, right? So with that change of variable, we have a similar differential equation. It's a third order, but it's much more complicated. Is a minus one over kappa and over e to the two t over kappa plus one n prime plus e two But again, in third order, uh, yeah, the e linear d e with the variable coefficient. Okay. This one is uh, actually is a better because we have a t squared and three t, and kappa is constant, so we have a polynomial coefficient. But this one, we have an exponential function there. <laughs> it's more complicated than this. So the the thing is that we are able to change calculus too. We are able to change this to Taylor series, Macron series, S0. Right? So change this series again. And we apply the series solution here again. And t equals 0. So it's a very, very, you know, again, messy work. So we determine the coefficient. That means, uh, yeah, we can get the alpha. So once you get the alpha, actually we need uh, to play with the constant we have there in the solution. Because that constant uh, is not arbitrary, as you see here. Once you have a B and C, those constant vectors, those are not arbitrary. So we have to say, we have to investigate more further to determine something like this. To have a nice uh, expression at the end. Okay. So this is the second work and third one. Those cut on me. Okay. 
2003, uh, Yan Chen, my thesis advisor, he wrote a paper uh, about the rectifying curve. Which means uh, if uh, a space curve satisfies uh, the special ratio, that is a linear, a, b constant. Then, this if and only if condition is uh, the position vector, position vector of the curve with that condition, this lies uh, always uh, and it's a rectifying plane. That means uh, we can write alpha of s as a as times t of s plus b of s b of s. The position vector can be written as a Line, uh, linear combination of T and B only. Okay. We don't have N direction. Which means uh, this position vector is always orthogonal to the N direction. Okay. Furthermore, this turns out to be S plus C. C is a constant. And this B is a constant. So that means uh, you are in that, that, that is the, the rectifying curve. Because uh, A is 1, B is 0. Okay. So, Lukács actually worked rectifying curve in four dimensional Minkowski space. So he worked, he considered. four-dimensional Minkowski space. This means uh, this is uh, is similar to the R4, R4, but it has a different metric. So that metric on here is uh, the t squares, the, that is minus the x uh, square plus d y square d z square x y z plus d k square something like that. So we have a time like uh, axis. So like uh, this one x and x is uh, minus one. So metric inner product is uh, not always positive definite. So in physics, uh, it's called the time-like vector. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have time-like and space-like and null. So null vector means uh, there is a vector u and u. If you take the dot product, that is a zero, but u is not zero. It never happened happen in Euclidean metric. But we allow that happen in the Minkowski space. Okay, I know. Yeah, I, I don't know much about it, but it is a theory in the general relativity or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, he considered this there. Okay. So he placed a different metric there in R four. So instead of using T and B, he uses T and B one, B two. There are two binomial vectors. Okay. So. Friend and set up fra frame, I see them. Oh, oops. So that is uh, using this metric. So that is 0, uh, 1, 0, 0. Uh, 1, 0, 0. Minus uh, 0, 0. Of a triple. 1, 2. 
So we hit two, two, three, minus perpetual three, zero. And T and B1, B2. So we assume T is a time like and the rest is a space like. So he investigated, he and I invested about the, the properties of those curvatures. That one actually we call curvature and torsion, but in general case, we can call, we can name torsion as a second curvature. Then we can add more as needed. So we call all of them curvatures. Okay, those are the ones, uh, actually. Yeah, there are some several theorems uh, related to those. Uh, so those are the ones that I did with those three people. Actually, that all started from that example we did in class. So if you change the condition a little bit, then we can make some new yeah, problem out of it. All right? Yeah. Okay. Then. Then. Okay. Then I think I have a time to tell you about the second thing. Then another approach is the following. Uh, involute and evolute. When you study space curve, we study curves itself, by itself. That's the approach. Right? We study curvature and torsion, and yeah, we study curve itself. But another approach is we study curves by associated curves, related curves. So that is another approach. So here, alpha, beta is a two regular curves. Okay. Then, definition. Beta is called an involute of the curve alpha. So we want to start, we want to define another curve, beta, okay? Yeah. Beta t of zero is on the tangent line to alpha at t zero. And their tangent, their tangent vectors are orthogonal. So here's the picture. Okay, so we have alpha, it's a regular curve, okay? We pick the point. Huh? There, and then draw a tangent line at this point. So there is a tangent line, okay? Then beta involute is, uh, the, the beta of T0 is somewhere there, but tangent to the beta at that point is orthogonal to this. So which means uh, like that. So that it has to be true for every point along the curve. Okay, so if you have, uh -oh. if you have over there, then you have this, so something like that. Yeah. So that is a bad. So we call this is involved. So 
So the newly derived curve that, that is called the involute of this alpha. Okay? Right? Mm -hmm. And involute is uh, the other way around. This is called the involute of alpha. And in terms of that, the alpha is the evolute of beta. <laughs> so they are related that way. So this is, let's say the alpha is evolute of beta. Okay? So they are related that way. So we can compare their curvatures. Their curvatures and torsions are related somehow, right? Because they are related, right? Okay. So with that definition, we can do the following. Let's assume alpha is a unit speed. Let's say beta is a envelope. Then what is the expression for beta? You can write the beta that involved in terms of alpha. Here, what is the beta minus uh, alpha? What is this? It's a beta, right? So here, let's say it's already in there. Uh, uh, let me draw this. Zero is so perilous. Let's say this is alpha. Then let's say okay. Zero is there. Let's say this. So minus alpha and beta is uh, this vector. Right? So beta minus alpha is minus alpha, minus alpha is this, plus beta is vector from this point to the this, right? So what is that? That is tangent, tangent to the alpha, right? So that is parallel to tangent to the alpha. Uh, I like to specify the tangent to the alpha, okay? So that means uh, you can write beta s as, uh, as uh, alpha of s plus some lambda of s t alpha of s because that is para is some multiple of t right actually here t alpha is uh, we assume alpha is a unit speed uh, so we can replace this by alpha prime. Alpha prime? Uh, alpha prime S? I'm, I, yeah, I'll just leave it there. Okay. And this is alpha prime, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. All right. So and then let's determine that. We can determine this further. Look at that, it's a beta prime s derivative. This is alpha prime s plus lambda prime t alpha 
plus lambda t prime. Right? Then our assumption is that their tangent is orthogonal. So beta prime, alpha prime, that has to be zero at the point that, that they meet, right? So that means uh, alpha prime s plus lambda prime t alpha, t alpha prime. Actually, this one is a k and by Friedel Seder theorem, okay, that alpha prime. I replace that beta prime as that. So, then this is a TT because we assume alpha is a unit speed. So this is a T dot T. So we have a one plus this, this, Mm-hmm, lambda prime, and this, this. Zero. This is T, right? So this is zero. So that is it. So we have lambda prime is minus one, which means uh, that lambda is uh, one. minus s plus some constant. So, we have a complete expression for the involver. So this is alpha of s plus c minus c1 minus s and t. The t is uh, the tangent to the alpha. Okay. Okay. Then, is that going to be just a one? How many are the involute possible? Infinitely many? Why? Right. We don't know that constant C, right? It's not fixed to C. So, we can take different C's, right? So, the infinitely many, because the C1, right? Then, If you call it that is beta 1, so beta 2 is 1. Same expression, but taking differences like that, right? So what is the difference between? What is the distance between those involutes then? Minus beta 2. Hmm? Right, it's constant. So they are apart by constant. Okay, they don't involutes don't meet. Right. Okay. Okay, that's the uh, first note about that. Mm. Beta is not regular. Yeah. Let's see when. We always use the regular curve, but there's some problem if uh, at some point uh, involute is not regular, which means derivative equals zero. Okay. So what is the derivative, the involute that we have? Alpha prime plus
Okay. Alpha prime. Derivative minus. Uh, this is alpha prime, right? Plus uh, C1 minus S uh, K prime. So this, this cancel down. So beta prime is uh, C1 minus S. Uh, then we can see, change that one. Kappa N. Okay, so this one is a function of S, so it's not zero, and N is not zero. So beta has a problem when, when curvature is a zero, curvature of the original curve alpha. So if you assume, assume that the curvature is non-zero anywhere along the alpha, then beta is uh, involved is regular. So, okay. Okay, then um, then three. Okay, I'm, I'm going to include this one. It's a middle term then. So here's the formula for the curvature of the involute then. So let's say this is a curvature of a beta. Then this is a curvature of the alpha. Then curvature of the involute square is a going to yeah include that one <laughs> the yeah, middle term yeah to I give you two weeks then next week we don't have a class right because of four recess then yeah that will be due another week after that okay so here you see the curvature square of the involute has uh, this curvature square of the original plus torsion square over that if you rewrite this one, you see, you can, you can see the ratio again. So this one is 1 plus uh, that. Okay, I like that ratio. <laughs> okay, that's it then. That's it. Okay, thank you.